Hi, welcome to the lesson on periodic table trends. Today's question, I know I'm asking a lot about patterns, but what are some patterns or trends you already know from the periodic table? A trend is just a property with a pattern. Don't let it scare you. The periodic table can tell you a lot about the properties of an element if you just know its location on the periodic table. Once you know how to read the periodic table, you can learn a lot about elements that you've never even heard of. There are a few specific trends that I'm going to talk to you about on the periodic table, the first of which is atomic radius. Now, this one's a little bit strange because atoms don't really have defined edges, um, kind of like Earth's atmosphere. Where does the atmosphere end and space begin? It kind of depends. An atom doesn't really have a defined edge. So for that reason, we can't find the radius. We know the center, but how far out does it go? To measure atomic radius, we take two identical nuclei, for example, two oxygen atoms, and then we will take the distance between the two nuclei and cut it in half because we will come out right about here, which should be the edge of each atom. On the periodic table, francium is our largest element down here in the lower left corner, and fluorine up here is actually the tiniest. I will talk more about the reasoning behind this in tomorrow's lesson um, because the reasoning is not that simple. There's a lot of factors that go into why this is the case. Um, but the first one that I want to tell you is super obvious, at least I think it is. Uh, as you go down the groups of the periodic table, your elements are going to get bigger because you're adding principal energy levels. Atomic radius is weird because as you go across a period from left to right, your atom actually gets smaller. And I know that's really weird and doesn't quite make sense, but I pinky promise I will explain it to you in the next video where we talk about nuclear charge and shielding. Um, because this, <laughs> this periodic table trend is a little counterintuitive. Another trend that we're going to talk about is ionization energy. And ionization energy, or specifically the first ionization energy, is the energy required to remove just one electron from a, an atom, from its valence shell specifically. We're going to take the electron that is most loosely held, so that's going to be any of the valence electrons that are furthest away from the nucleus. It's the most loosely held because if the nucleus is positive and electrons are negative, they're going to be attracted to each other. And just like magnets, the closer these two things are, the more attraction between them and the farther apart, the less attraction. So we have to be pulling a valence electron in this case. You may also have heard the terms second ionization energy or third or fourth ionization energy. And those are the energies required to pull the second, third and fourth electrons respectively. Now, again, depending on the nuclear charge and the shielding effect inside of an atom is really going to dictate its ionization energy and why this trend is the way that it is. But I can tell you that looking at what we like to sometimes call the lucky corners, francium has the lowest ionization energy on the whole periodic table and fluorine has the highest. Using this arrow, you can kind of dictate the trends across. Ionization energy is going to decrease as you go down from high to low, and it is going to increase going from left to right. It's kind of like vector addition if you've taken physics. Um, this is the sum of a vertical line and a horizontal line. So those group and period trends are summarized by this big purple arrow. The next trend on the periodic table is electronegativity. And it's kind of similar to ionization energy, except kind of the opposite. Um, the, it is the measure of the attraction for electrons in a bond, or in other words, how well an atom holds on to its electrons. So if we're looking at this molecule here, this is water. We have oxygen in the middle that's blue, and then the two hydrogens. Hydrogen and oxygen in between each of these um, atoms is sharing an electron and that electron is in the middle of a tug of war between the two atoms. So because oxygen has a higher electronegativity, it is going to pull that electron in. Oxygen really wants electrons. So it's also going to have a high ionization energy right here next to fluorine. This is kind of to tell you that, um, oxygen, wants electrons and doesn't want to give them away. 
the two go hand in hand. With a high electronegativity, you really, really, really want electrons, and your ionization energy is going to be high because you really don't want to give them away. So again, your high electronegativity is going to be focused in the fluorine corner, and your low electronegativity is going to be in your francium corner. There are two Fs on the periodic table. Additionally, you can judge really any other element based on this trend. Like I was saying, oxygen has a high electronegativity because it's up here near fluorine. Chlorine right below it is also going to have a high electronegativity. If you consider um, rubidium and cesium over here, they have pretty low electronegativities because they're hanging out in this corner near francium. You can use this trend to estimate all of the other properties for these elements that I'm describing. Electronegativity runs on a scale from 0.7 in this low corner to 4.0 in the high corner. That's based on the Pauling scale by Linus Pauling. He rated fluorine as a 4.0, francium as a 0.7, and everything else falls in the middle. Next up, we have metallic character, which is also very related to electronegativity and ionization energy because it's related to electrons. Metallic character is defined as the willingness of an atom to lose electrons. So if it's a metal, it wants to lose. If it is a non-metal, it wants to gain. And that's how we really define these things. So because metallic character, again, is related to electrons, and fluorine is up here in this corner with the highest electronegativity, so she is going to win tug of war for any electron that she is near, and it takes a crazy amount of energy to take away her electrons, it makes sense that she would have low metallic character, and really she would not be willing to lose electrons at all. Francium, on the other hand, has a really low ionization energy, so it's very easy to take its electron, and it has a low electronegativity, meaning that it doesn't really want to fight for electrons. It doesn't really want to keep them. So that just makes sense that it would have a very high metallic character. Then again, we can judge all of the other elements based on this trend. Something I love to look at is really just like how the periodic table is cut up. Remember the metals are on the left side, metalloids are on the staircase line, and non-metals are over here on the right side. So it makes sense that the metallic character would be with the metallic elements and the uh, low metallic character would be over here with nonmetals. There's also a group on the periodic table, which is a great example of metallic character in a vertical group. And that is the group that is headed by carbon. Carbon is a nonmetal. Then beneath it is silicon and germanium, if I remember correctly. And those are your metalloids, which are getting more metallic. Then beneath that, you would have tin, which I'm sure you know is a metal. And uh, beneath that, we have lead. So as we go down a group, we're going from a very classic non-metal to a very classic metal. Going down a group, we're going to increase metallic character. So at this point, your teacher should be able to give you a small string of elements. Typically, they're going to be in the same group or the same period or maybe a combination of both and we'll be able to ask you to put them in order of atomic radius or metallic character, ionization energy, or electronegativity. And just using the trends, you should be able to make some comparisons. So this question asks to put the following elements in order from least to greatest for each periodic table trend. And here's the answers. Um, if we're looking at magnesium, aluminum, silicon, phosphorus, and chlorine, we are looking at five elements that are in period three. So in this case, we are talking about elements that are in the same horizontal row. And if we're looking at atomic radius, um, because fluorine, the one that's most to the right, is the smallest radius, then in accordance, our list of elements, whichever is most to the right, should be the smallest radius, and then working backwards towards the left. Um, so this trend here shows increasing radius with the smallest working out to the biggest. Again, we're working with elements in the same period. Then we can do this for um, electronegativity, which is going to be opposite. Uh, magnesium is going to be the lowest electronegativity and then is going to be increasing as we get to chlorine. 
Same with ionization energy. Magnesium will have the lowest ionization energy working its way up to chlorine. And in terms of metallic character, this trend is perfect. We would have chlorine with the lowest metallic character being a nonmetal, um, which would be here. Then we have um, phosphorus right here working towards the metals going to the left. Um, actually to the left, sorry, I'm mirror imaged. So this would be phosphorus. Then we have silicon right here, which is the metalloid, which is somewhere between metal and non-metal. Aluminum is a metal and then magnesium is a little bit more metallic because it's closer to uh, francium, which is the most metallic of all the elements. You can do the same thing with groups on the periodic table using the same concepts. So if there are any questions, please leave them in the comment section below the video. Subscribe so you don't miss the next lesson, which is going to explain the reasoning behind all of these trends down to the atomic level um, in the form of nuclear charge and shielding. And um, I think that's it. <laughs> See you in the next one. Bye.